As many people will be aware, I've made a name for myself reviewing EV chargers like them. However, in today's video, I'm going to see if I can power my Cozy 6 heat pump using nothing but my Hyundai Ionic 5. And, disclaimer, don't try this at home. I'm a trained idiot. A vehicle to grid, vehicle to home has been around since the early Nissan Leafs. But instead of using a conventional AC charge like this, they used to use a Chadamo charger on the wall and the charger itself did the conversion back to your home. So in other words, the house sent DC down the Chadamo cable, or if you like the CCS cable, and then the charger on the wall had an inverter in it that then converted that back to AC back to your home. Now we are going to see that change now with cars, with the actual car sending out AC from the car and a standard basically normal AC charger just basically to handling some of the stuff in the house. Now, the reason I want to talk about this is there's a couple of ways it may be done. We've not got a full, we've got the cars coming, but we haven't fully seen how this is going to happen. And I want to talk about some of the pitfalls from what I believe manufacturers of EV cars and EV chargers are going to be doing with vehicle to home when it comes to AC. Now, there's a few brands of cars coming out this year that will do vehicle to home or vehicle to grid. In fact, some of them are already being sold, but not officially telling customers that they will do vehicle to grid, vehicle to home. Now, some of the reports I've seen is that they will be VIN locked to the charger that you get. So in other words, you'll buy the charger for that car, a special AC vehicle to grid charger for that car, and it will be VIN locked to the car that you buy to do vehicle to grid. Now, I'm not 100% sure if that's a true fact yet. We'll wait until we see them come out. But one thing I do know that will definitely happen is that you are not be able to use one of these existing AC chargers. You'll have to get a new AC charger to do vehicle to grid, vehicle to home in the way that manufacturers are gonna be out rolling it out. So if you've already got an existing charger, the chances are that charger won't be able to do vehicle to grid, vehicle to home. Um, some manufacturers are claiming that some of their chargers will be vehicle to grid ready, vehicle to grid home ready without knowing which manufacturers are going to do what, I don't think that anyone can truly claim that. Because that's the next issue that I've heard, is that some of the cars will be only be able to do vehicle to grid with certain brand of EV chargers. In other words, the charge partner that the car company is partnered with. So if a car company is partnered with one brand, it will only work with that one brand of car and that one brand of charger. This seems like an absolute mess. Now there's some other messes to do with the vehicle to grid, vehicle to home. That's to do with the way the DNO works here in the UK. Now currently in the UK, if you connect any device to the grid, you have to tell the DNO, the distribute network operator that run the local cables in your area. So be that an inverter, an AC charger, or vehicle to grid system or solar system, you tell the DNO and then the DNO can make sure that the cables in the street are up to scratch adequate or there's not gonna be an imbalance in the system with your neighbors that's gonna cause issues for them or your neighbors down the line. It's important that this is informed and there's different procedures around that that have been around for years. Now the problem with vehicle to grid AC chargers is if that's linked to the car and the charger when you do it, then you'll apply for that G99 when you install the AC charger vehicle to grid for that car. Now the issue comes with if you sell that car and you're not gonna keep that brand of car anymore, you'll probably sell the charger with your car. And if you do that, then who tells the DNO that someone's installed this other charger for another car in another distribution? People won't do it if it's like this. And also, what happens if you get another car that can output more power to the grid than your old vehicle to grid charger and your vehicle to grid car? I mean, who tells the DNO then about the changing? It's an absolute mess. And car manufacturers, EV charging firms who make these chargers, they've all had years and years and years to sort this mess out, absolute ages to sort it out here in the UK, and they haven't. And my worry is that the first adopters of vehicle to grid, vehicle to home cars are going to pay the price. So as I said, the chargers don't exist. So how am I gonna do it today with the Ionic 5? Well, some of you may have guessed, this comes with vehicle to load. Vehicle to load is not the same as vehicle to grid. We have a type two socket that comes out of the car here and that converts it into a standard domestic socket. If you're in Europe, you'll obviously get your own plug, but here we get the British uh, free pin plug, one of the best plugs in the world. Anyone who disagrees, go and read any videos about how wonderful our plug is. But this will output 13 amps from the car to my house. Now, 
I'm going to go through some caveats on my how dangerous this is in a minute. But essentially, that means I'm going to have enough power to run just the heat pump. Again, do not try this at home. This cable has the wonderful name as a suicide cable. It has a basically a plug either side that, when touched, is completely live to a dangerous electric shock. So do not try this at home. It could really go wrong. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this up. We're going to plug this in here. Now, both ends are going to be live. Now, at the moment, this is turned off by its socket. So this is currently reasonably safe. And we're going to open this socket here and then plug the car in. Now, I've disconnected the grid, so there's no chance of it going back to the grid. I've also uh, disconnected all the home electrics. The only thing turned on on the brake at the moment is this plug 13 amp to my garage and the heat pump. So nothing else on breakers is turned on. Solar's turned off, battery's turned off. Everything is isolated safely. Now we're gonna turn this plug on and see what happens. Now it does run, it's just enough power to run the heat pump and the auxiliary systems inside the heat pump. So if I do have a power cut, I can keep the house warm and the hot water tank heated up. The question is, is it a pure sine wave? Now I need a sine wave machine to check this. And the reason I ask that is if it's a pure sine wave that the Hyundai 5 generates, it means I can turn my battery back on, my solar back on, and completely run off grid in the case of a power cut. Let me know down below in the comments what you think that would be look like and would it happen, would it work, would the solar kick back in? Now, if you're interested in learning more about my heat pump journey, check out this playlist here full of heat pump videos. And if you want to learn more about EV chargers that I've been reviewing, check out this video right here.